So unbeknownst to me, it turns out once I drove into Red Rock Canyon State Park, it said, you need a permit in order to drive through the park during the winter months so that they only allow just so many people in there. So to kill time after we got the permit, which is set for a specific time of day, we climbed up to the top of the mountain and got this awesome view. Hey, and welcome back to Ellie Knows Rocks. I am standing in Red Rock Canyon in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am on old lithified sand dunes from the Jurassic era. And I am hiking around with two friends today because we have a day off from filming in Las Vegas, because you all know I like to do that. So right behind me is the Keystone Fault. And that is responsible for upthrusting all of the limestone that is much, much older than the sandstone up over the sandstone. So you get these beautiful, beautiful uplifts of sandstone behind us. You get gorgeous trails, you get Turtleback Mountain, and then you get an actual daylight of part of the fault on this area. But all of this is a huge combination of two different time zones. And I'll talk about those later on in the video. Thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure and let's go see what we find. against the wind, into the wind. <laughs> it's just the stuff. Cheese. I did a rock litter. Yeah. A rock litter. Wow. We're looking at a differentiation in colors of rust in the rock. And although it looks like they were pushed up on top of each other, that is not the case at all. It just means that the top layer has a more iron content and oxidized faster than this more peach layers here. And each one of the striations that you see is not actually anything that cut it physically. Uh, is a sense of a rock scraping on a rock. It was because the wind has blown this area with little bits of sand and created scratches. But you can see little wave marks through it that go in these directions, that's because all of this was dunes. These were huge, huge sand dunes in the Jurassic that got lithified. Basically, petrified sand dunes. And then you have those beautiful limestone hills in the background. Oh. Hopefully, my microphone can still hear me. So I'm standing on the edges of the red and the white layer. This one is highly oxidized, tons of iron. And then all of a sudden you get this lighter material down here. Did the same thing. The sand greens are pretty much the same. It's just it didn't have the iron influx that that did when all of this started to lithify. Isn't that cool? Thank you. <laughs> that was awesome. These are interesting features in the sandstone. Some people ask why there's these circular motions. So when it does rain and little bits of particles from the lithified sand dunes come down 
They wash down into these areas and they swirl in circles. And little particles of sand eventually eat away from this sandstone and then push it away. So you get these layers of pools. So you, they look like little steps and circles. These little finger holes in the sandstone with those rounded cuts through them are formed the same way as those bigger holes are formed. Isn't that awesome to see? Just look at the change in color. That's the coolest thing. In the background, maybe if we're lucky we'll get to see like a tortoise or some kind of a lizard. I wouldn't mind seeing a rattlesnake, although they're probably all hidden because it's freezing freaking cold right now. So, you know. But this isn't the hike we're taking. We are traveling forward, but I just wanted to stop and see that because the color change is drastic. We're going that direction. Look at those sands, those layers of limestone up there. Look how beautiful that is. Those are amazing. Streams coming down. It's like a couple of unconformities going on. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> like my face. <laughs> Good time for you. And then, like... You were just down there. Whoa. This is a great example of the basin and range. The basin being the flat part and the range being this awesome set of huge mountains right beside us. Part of the mountains are sandstone and then we get into the other much older mountains that have been thrusted upon them that are limestone. The Basin and Range is an awesome part of Nevada's geologic history. And that history created these geologic wonders we look at today. Driving like a goober trying to like over my hood, but once again, Dan, I'm not hurting the car, I swear. Okay? I promise, and this is probably the reason why we have a bent rim. But we're good. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, 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 there's some. Oh yeah, I see trucks up there. It's worth it. It's for the rocks, okay? It's for the rocks. Although we could have, maybe walked. It's okay. We're, we're doing it. How old is this? Two hundred and you know, sixty-five million. Um, the limestone is six hundred million years old, and then. Um, Age dating? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, because there are half-lifes. There are minerals, there are radioactive minerals that are in every rock that have half-lifes that are, they've had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of studies on half-lifes of minerals in, oh, okay. in radio da dating. So radiometric dating is a huge, huge ordeal. And that's how they found out that the zircon crystals in um, like New Jersey and New York and stuff like that, um, are the oldest crystals in the world at you know 4.2 to 4.4 billion years old. There's a slight level of variation depending on and the test. So there is that level where you're not exactly sure because you have to leave room um, just for stuff. Well, I predict that Earth has been destroyed once. Like the, the, the surface of the Earth has been destroyed once by water. And if that's true, would that affect, how would that affect? So geologically speaking, if we're gonna talk about that, um, like in a biblical standpoint, everybody thinks that the earth was completely, completely flooded. And that, you know, all of this happened in 40 days. Yeah, no, I'm not, and I'm then, not saying that. Oh no, yeah, um, and so, and then people think that the entire world was underwater at some point or, yeah, or or covered. Yeah. Parts of that are true. Like what we're looking at now, even though this is all up thrust, this was all under water. This is all a shallow is it sea. Because of melted ice? Mm -mm. Oh, no, just. I know nothing. No, no, it's okay. Like there's been many, many ice ages. So everything's been covered with ice or covered in snow at one point. I mean, you know, people don't realize that the ice ages that have covered the United States throughout time. Oh man, we're going to go check out the Keystone Thrust Trail. This is the major 
geologic feature and fault in this area. And I'm friends. Wave. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> so when you hear voices in the background, if the microphone picks them up, that's who I'm talking to. The little bits of iron. Eczema. <laughs> eczema. That's cute. Yeah, so the. It has STD. <laughs> Maybe I need to rethink my friends. <laughs> Oh, see, see, there are so many things we can do with these rocks. These are actually areas of exposed iron that is now oxidizing that have been hidden, but they're being exposed because the rock is weathering down. <laughs> so yes, it needs massive laser. <laughs> what? So what, you'd have to wear the padded underwear the entire time? Wow, this is just really pretty. And there's like no wind up here, guys. Look at the limestone. This is what the thrust fault did. The keystone thrust fault brought this limestone up on top of the sandstone. Wow, wow. Snow. The white, elusive, freezing cold mineral, icy snow. So, fun trail discussion. We're, we're talking about the ways that we would survive if we were here. So, so far we would start a fire and then we would dig a pit and we would line it with sagebrush and what? Uh, we'll and then we cover it with what? Just yeah, bre like branches. So that nothing could get inside. <laughs> so I guess that's what we would do. What's plan B? Uh, well, I don't have my... Do I have my flint necklace on me? I might. So I should have a flint and a striker, but I also have a lighter. <laughs> and if not, I guess we could try to use the sun through my hand lens to create a pinpoint, although that rarely works, to make a, a fire. Otherwise, we have these lovely branches from trees and we could make ourselves one hell of a fort to sleep in overnight if we had to. I would just worry about the bobcats or lynxes and critters. Wow, well, it looks like a little like lean-to over there sort of thing with the rocks that fell. Totally could be like campsite, <laughs> little creek. Uh -huh. The snow in the hills. Oh man. And that, I believe, right there is our keystone fault. I'm not exactly sure. I'm hoping there's a contact that direction. <laughs> All right, limestone. Chert lesson. Everybody asks what chert is, the microcrystalline quartz, right? But the thing is, chert is made out of silicate critters that died in an ocean or a sea, and their little bodies sank down past the CCD levels, which is below 3,650 feet underwater. And that gives these enough pressure underwater in order to become an actual mineral. So you get chert. A lot of people make arrowheads out of it and stuff like that, but it's cool to see it because it's coming out of those big old cliffs over there. Cool little fossilized coral stem. That's pretty sweet. So because of the fault that's behind us, which I'll show you in just a second, we have this huge upthrust of all of these rocks that are now going in this direction. 
So you get all of this movement, so you have all these striations that should be flat because strata is deposited horizontal and then has now become vertical. And since these were all ancient sand dunes, they still have sand layers in them. And so you can see all of these beautiful little striations, which all this, again, was deposited like this and has now been tilted this direction. So it comes up just like that. So all of this is just stunning. And it's because of this behind us. All of this limestone is much, much, much older. And this huge thrusting fault system, you can even see part of the differentiation here. And again, really big in that area where it pushed the limestone that's much older over the sandstone. Keystone thrust fault, which is pretty sweet. It's a huge geologic feature in the area and it's responsible for creating this landscape. Plus, in the middle of all this going on, you get the basin and range that started happening. So you get this ignimbrite flare up, which is all of these volcanoes that are erupting all over. After all the volcanoes erupted, basically all these inner faults underneath of us and, and shifts were happening. So it created this taffy with our crust essentially, which when continental collisions started happening and everything started pushing towards each other, due to different faults, you get these huge mountains. So it created this basin and range. So all of these ranges, the mountains, and then you get the beautiful basins down there, that little tiny dots down there. That's Las Vegas, that's the city. It's in part of one of the basins. And so all of these surrounding hills are all part of that. So Lindsay found a smiling rock. Look how happy he is. Two eyes and like a weird little mouth of, so it's almost like a, um, a jack-o'-lantern sort of Mom mouth. Mom Mom Mark. That's so cute. All right, guys, we're going to go see the petroglyph wall. It is 0.1 mile, so that's nothing. Basically, um, should be pretty easy. Go down this little trail, and <laughs> it should hopefully be over here. That's freaking cool. Yeah. Look at those. This one. That's amazing. So these petroglyphs, they're carved into the desert varnish that is on this sandstone right behind me. Isn't that neat? All right, guys, this is something that's kind of cool. Like in Arizona, you don't see pictographs and petroglyphs in the same area, but this park has it. Check it out. There's one right here, and there's handprints up on the wall. Isn't that awesome? Look how cool those are. This is amazing. It's really, really, really neat. You can kind of see some of them kind of go up a little bit. They don't go too far, too high. A little bit of little writing down over there too. Cool guys. I love seeing petroglyphs. Those are awesome. Well, this is at the end of our day. I hope you guys thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. And I'll see you on the next one. A super super short hike like no distance at all like the parking area right over that general direction and then you get this beautiful beautiful sandstone cliffs behind me ah, so I'm going back to the car to head off to dinner because yeah I'm, 
I'm hungry. I need, I need food.